Pokemon Draft League. You know it, I know it, we all love it. Over the past three years, we've shared a ton of memories on good old Pokemon Showdown playing against our friends in the APDL. But today, that changes. No, nothing's happened to my friends and we're all still going to be playing in my draft league. But for the first time ever, I thought it was time to actually compete in the games we all know and love. That's right, I have joined my first ever Wi-Fi draft league in the WPF. With the recent introduction of the Indigo Disc DLC for Scarlet and Violet, I decided to try my hand at getting away from that lovely showdown background we all love and get into something that both looks and feels quite a bit better. I also decided to bring back one of my favorite team names from our APDL Little Cup season in the World Island Whoopers. Now with an upgraded logo. So without further ado, my name is Ark and welcome to WPF Season 15. Our journey begins like any other draft league, and that is with the draft. For this league, there are 16 coaches, and each coach has a maximum total of 110 points to spend on 9 to 11 Pokemon. After the draft, you're also allotted 15 Terra points to spend on anywhere from 1 to 3 Terra captains. We found ourselves at 6th in the draft order, which is characteristically not a great spot to be in for the draft. But nonetheless, I was excited to actually draft some really fun Pokemon. The only thing I truly lacked right now was a plan. To be honest, when I applied for the league, I didn't expect to get in, uh, so this is all just an incredibly happy accident. So I decided the best strategy was to just start with some good stuff and piece together things as I went. So let's not waste any more time and let's get right into the draft review. To start the draft, I wanted one of the premier mons on the board since I was the sixth pick and wouldn't be picking my second mon until 20 picks later. With no real concrete direction to go, I decided that the best option was to go with Great Tusk. Great Tusk is one of the absolute best of the new Paradox Pokemon introduced in Scarlet and Violet. It has great HP as well as fantastic attack and defensive stats, making it a really sticky threat on the physical side. 87 base speed is nothing to scoff at either, since due to Tusk's ability Protosynthesis, I have a high chance of raising my attack, defense, or speed in sunlight or via booster energy. While Tusk appears to have a ton of type weaknesses, it makes up for it in a strong list of resistances as well as a great move pool. With Tusk, I have access to an incredibly bulky spinner to get rid of hazards, can run bulky defensive sets to wall out physical sweepers, and can dish out plenty of offense of my own with moves such as headlong rush, close combat, knockoff, and more. While Tusk cost me a whopping 19 of my 110 points, I felt that I had a great foundation to start building the team. With my next pick, I wanted something that could be really bulky on the special side to make up for Tusk's non-existent special stats. I also really wanted to try out something new, so I went with Raging Bolt. For 13 points, I felt getting Raging Bolt was a great investment. With monster HP and special attack stats and decent bulk to boot, Bolt seemed like it would be a good piece to start building my offense around. Like Great Tusk, Raging Bolt also has Protosynthesis to help boost its stats. This, in combination with powerful stab moves such as Draco Meteor and Thunderbolt, and the ability to set up with Calm Mind, make it a major threat for my opponents. Best of all, Bolt also has access to a new powerful priority move, Thunderclap, which has 70 base power and functions similarly to Sucker Punch. Overall, I thought it would be a really fun Pokemon to experiment with, making it a really solid number 2 pick. 2 picks in and I feel I have a solid foundation. However, it's very obvious that having two Pokemon already weak to the powerful offensive typing in Ice and not really appreciating ground type moves, it can be kind of an issue. I also lack top end speed, so in order to offset some of those weaknesses, I decided that for my third pick, I'll grab a Mon that I've been looking to get for a while in Azelf. Azelf joins the squad with a monstrous attack and special attack stats and a great 115 base speed. While it lacks natural bulk, Azelf can fill a ton of roles as a mixed attacker as well as a support Pokemon. With access to Stealth Rock, Knock Off, and Dual Screens as well as moves like Encore, Azelf can be an annoying Pokemon for my opponents to work around. In addition to those great support moves, Azelf's attacking move pool is incredibly deep and can keep my opponent guessing while providing huge offensive pressure. Most importantly, Azelf has the Levitate ability, making it immune to ground type moves that my first two picks don't necessarily appreciate. 
With my next pick in the draft, I really wanted to get some offense as well as some more speed. While the next pick is yet another Pokemon weak to the ground type, I thought it could be really solid as I still needed an Ice and Fairy Resist as well. We can make up that ground weakness later on, but for now, Cinderace will be joining the team. Cinderace is one of the most powerful starter Pokemon due to its top-notch 119 speed and access to its Libero ability, which can provide me with a stab bonus on my first attack anytime Cinderace enters the field. Cinderace has great pivot potential with U-Turn, as well as scary physical moves topped off with a signature Pyro Ball, which is a whopping 120 base power. Cinderace also has some fun setup opportunities with both Bulk Up and Sword Stance, but most importantly can use the move Court Change, which can allow me to swap my hazards to my opponent back onto their side of the field. My team is looking great so far, but there are two downsides. Number one, I obviously am very susceptible to ground weaknesses, and number two, I've already spent 59 of my 110 allotted points. I need to draft at least five more Pokemon, so I need to start filling up the gaps. Thankfully, there are a ton of great lower point Pokemon available, and the one that really caught my eye for my fifth pick was none other than Porygon 2. Porygon 2 joins the team as our first dedicated wall while only having one weakness in the fighting type and access to the item Eviolite, which boosts my already great defenses to even further heights. With utility moves such as Dual Screens, Foul Play, Thunder Wave, and Trick Room as well as Recover, Pori can be a very sticky threat for me and can support the rest of my team in a big way. Not to mention Porygon has access to three useful abilities in Trace, Download, and Analytic, which all has some fun strategies as well. I used Porygon 2 way back in my first ever season of Draft League in APDL over three years ago, and I'm stoked to see it return. So for my sixth pick, I wanted even more speed and a resistance to that pesky ground type. As I was looking at the draft board, I found a new Pokemon that I thought would be really fun to try in Ogre Pond. Ogre Pond joins the squad as a fast, reliable threat with some decent natural bulk. In addition to its base stats, Ogre Pond's ability Defiant can provide it with an attack boost every time one of its stats is lowered, which can give my team great momentum in an instant. While Ogre Pond has access to great offensive moves such as Ivy Cudgel, Play Rough, and Knock Off, it can also double as a supportive Pokemon with Spikes, Spiky Shield for chip damage, and Encore to deter setup threats. While this Ogre Pond won't be able to take advantage of terrestrialization in this league, I feel it can do great things for my team from game to game. At this point, we're over halfway through our draft, and I feel like I'm still missing a really, really solid water type Pokemon to cover my type chart a little bit better. I also wanted a bit more bulk and wanted to start thinking about some potential Terra Captains. I found the perfect answer in Vaporeon. Vaporeon joins the team as a prime time defensive threat with a great 130 HP stat and 95 special defense. Vaporeon's defensive capabilities with Wish, Yawn, and Haze are quite obvious, but it can also double as a decent offensive threat with a decent 110 base special attack and access to moves such as Scald, Ice Beam, and Terra Blast. Vaporeon will be the first of my two Terra Captains and will be able to Terra into a Water type, a Ghost type to help with Rapid Spinners, and a Fairy type since Fairy is a great overall typing. Now that we have our first Terra Captain and the team is looking a bit more cohesive, I wanted to find a dedicated Ice and Fairy Resist since Vaporeon is still susceptible to Freeze Dry since it's a Water type. I also wanted a faster Special Attacking Threat as well. This is a pretty narrow criteria to follow, but I think I found a great answer in yet another new Paradox Pokemon in Iron Crown. Our budget Metagross here boasts great stats in all but its physical attack and so many resistances that they barely fit in the space I provided. Iron Crown for 11 points felt like a real steal, uh, if you know what I mean. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, but with access to the ability Cork Drive, a booster energy, or electric terrain makes Crown a problem. On top of that, it has some great pivot potential with Volt Switch, can deter Pokemon trying to heal with Psychic Noise, and has the ability to set up with moves like Calm Mind and Iron Defense. The only downside, yet another ground weakness. So we'll need to work around that. At this point in the draft, I'm left with a decision. I only have 8 points remaining, so I can choose to draft only 9 Pokemon and try to pick up another Terra Captain, but it can only be 6 or 7 points. Or, I can choose to fill out the rest of my team with a full 10 and pick up 2 more Mons. I ultimately decide that 2 Mons are better than 1 and found a really fun option for a Terra Captain in none other than Regirock. Regirock is a hilarious option to be on the table for Terrastalization and will have access to Terra Rock, Fighting to out 
offset my ground weakness and boost moves like body press, and fairy once again due to the overall strength of the typing. It's no secret that Rock is bulky, but a base 200 defense stat on top of Sturdy guarantees that Regirock will never go down in just one hit. Regirock can also double as a hazard setter with Stealth Rock, and has some access to some fun other utility moves that I won't spoil just yet. Just know that Regirock is going to do some really goofy things this season, and I couldn't be more excited. So now I have both of my Terra Captains, and I feel my draft is almost complete. With only two points remaining, my options are pretty limited. Uh, but I think I found something that can actually be of use in Illumise. Illumise is never going to wow anybody on the base stat front, uh, but its base 75 and 85 defenses are okay at best, and it's never going to do a ton of damage. However, Illumise has access to an incredibly powerful ability, Prankster, which gives its status moves a boost and priority. This means that Illumise can be incredibly disruptive with moves such as Tailwind, Thunder Wave, Encore, Moonlight, and more. I figured that Illumisi can play an enabler role and help the rest of my team get the punch that I really need to win games. For two points, I felt like it was a pretty good way to cap off the draft. So there you have it, my full team for the WPF Delta Division on Wi-Fi. Uh, this is my first ever league on Wi-Fi and I couldn't be more excited to bring you guys some higher quality gameplay against a bunch of other creators as well. Also have you know that after the draft concluded, there was a 24 hour grace period in which coaches could make up to five free agent transactions free of charge. As someone who normally mixes around my team a ton throughout draft seasons, I'm happy to say that for the first time, I feel confident in the 10 mons that I drafted and I have no intention of making changes just yet. So let me know what you think of the squad and what you're excited to see this season. Matches will be going up every Friday starting January 19th for at least nine weeks. The top eight teams make playoffs, and that's my goal for the league. So thanks for watching, everybody. Like, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff, and go Whirl Island Whoopers. Peace.